Okay, kiddos, couple updates. There's some huge changes. So you walk in, first thing you'll notice, Mill's still here. Lade's been taken mostly apart by John. The astute among you may notice gigantic gantry hoist crane dealy thing. I just got and we just put together, which is awesome. It was so much fun. We have some really funny pictures of how we got it together. So you took this apart. We are gonna take the spindle assembly off completely, scrap it, and then I'm gonna build a new spindle and we're gonna be do using this for inside spinning. So we're gonna keep the cross slide table deal thing, clean it up, use that, and that's gonna be awesome. When you walk over here, you'll notice there's no longer a shaper here. So that one got sold. All the shapers are sold. Only thing that's not sold is this big mill. But I got a guy in St. Louis who says he might want it. John bought this guy for no money because he's a bitch. So we got some horns out here. We were doing some stuff. I got these cabinets from Lost Creek. You might have seen these in a Mr. Pete video when he was touring there. I swindled them out from all of you. I also got this from Lost Creek, this hoist. And then this last shaper, this is, brown one is Andrew Shaper. So that's gonna stay here while he pays me to have it here because he has no space for it. It's going in the basement though. This shaper is going to Lost Creek as well. And now that we have this, I gotta get some wheels for it so we can move it around and then we'll be able to disassemble this guy all the way. Drill presses, I moved here. Just get him out of the way, out of the middle of the floor. I don't like the machines in the middle of the floor thing. I get it because that's where this beam is, but I just don't like it very much. I did stuff over here. Same old, same old. Electricians are coming in next week to do all the work here. I took this thing apart and it's awesome. Like mega chat. Okay, I'm back. So these skylights used to have screens over them. Just yesterday I cut out the screens and look up here and I'm like, oh, we don't have to drywall over that. We just paint up there and put some cool shit up there. These shapers are going. I'm happy about that. I hate shapers. The 110 panel over there is going to be run off of. The electricians are coming in. They're gonna put in, we need to pull a neutral from the pole, which luckily it's there. This is 240 volt, 400 amps. We only need 200 amps because I'm running everything off of 40 right now anyway, so it's fine. So we're gonna downsize from 400 amps to 200 amps. Probably gonna go behind where this press is and then these will just be garbage. They're gonna run the new 120 volt panel off of the 240, because you can do that now. So it won't be coming in for the street here. And then there'll be a separate panel in the gay garage, or not gay garage, the uh, apartment. We're just doing shit. So we're doing some painting. So these are all primed. My mom has been doing these. Actually the insides are finished painted and she has these liners in. This is just all shit that was here. I haven't brought my stuff in yet. In here, it's a huge, Huge difference. Look at that. Still have to do this wall. Everything else is primed. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So we scraped the walls. All that's left here, the little uh, continents you can see, it's like a wet, it's like a weird map. These were stuck enough to the wall to where we could paint over them. We got some advice by some friends who are painters on how much to scrape because we could have easily tried to go after everything, but not really a point. So little, little trim pieces to finish painting, all that stuff. I think down there is still. The old paint, yep. Yeah, what a huge difference in here. The product we're using for the primer is the Zinzer bin, the cheaper one, because it's like a shellac stuff and it will seal all this stuff in. And then we were told you use this and then you do your plaster repairs because these walls are plaster. You do your repairs, so all the cracks and everything, and then you paint over that. I, I thought we'd have to do, do this, plaster repair, do this again over the plaster repairs, but I'm not that worried about it. Anything we'll do will be better than what they did last time, which is just paint, latex paint over oil paint paint over dirty oil paint walls. Oh yeah, this door opens. It opens. I'm gonna make a little cat hangout out here. Get some grass out there. So I bought this from Lost Creek and Matt sent me a picture when uh, he was disassembling it for me to move it. And he was like, takes two forklifts to disassemble slash reassemble. And then yesterday after we assembled it, I sent him a picture said, two forklifts my ass. What we did is we stood up one of these A-frames, put this pole in it on like kind of an angle, like, you know, like yay. And then I, I was still, I had the bolts ready. And I had Andrew and John with what I-beam with one end on the floor stand the I-beam up and I threw some bolts in it and it worked. And then we had to lift it up, prop it up, and then we had John lift the beam up. So much fun. But it only took like 30 minutes or something. It was really quick and no one died. Look at that. I think it's nine feet tall, 12 feet long. Probably a little bit big for what we do, but the day we have to make tubas, we're gonna be loving this thing. Yeah, the shapers sold. July 3rd, where it's getting moved. I think shapers are really dumb and I don't like them. That's just my very valid, valid opinion. Anyone need some 5 16 Allen keys? Because I have like 2,000 5 16 Allen keys. Like a shocking amount. Okay, a couple things have changed here. John got that lathe almost full. The, the saddle will just lift that off. We gotta clean it though. Move Andrew's shaper forward. I've got a bunch of scrap out. Yellow shaper number two is at Lost Creek, so go buy it. But otherwise, we're getting all this stuff cleared out. 
Look at that. It's starting to look like an actual space I could clean. Last machine to go. Some guy says he wants to come get it this weekend, but you know how that is. But look how clear that is. This is basically empty. These, they're just the patterns that'll go back in the mailing room. This drill press will get moved over with the others. We had a little leak. One step closer to not going bankrupt. Two days ago, I cleared off this table. And now we're back. Like chickens are coming in soon. We're just waiting on a clearance for the city. I'm putting a new sink in here. Putting a bigger sink in so I could actually fit a horn. So what cat's, you doing, Andrew? Your cat's waving at me. I'm cutting your fucking shaper out of the floor because some knuckleheads bolted it to the floor and drywall over the bolts. Okay, let me move my move cat. Wild animal. Thumbnail. Are you kidding me? I thought you said they drywalled over it. They did. There might be a hole there. It just hit the floor. Might be a hole. Are you kidding me? Dude, have you seen the basement? Dude! Even if we could have reached the bolts on the other end, we would have cut them off. They just fell too! There might be a hole there. I actually don't know where this is. What the fuck? Where is this? I'm gonna kill you. How big are these bolts? They're big, dude. That was a chunk. Yeah, these are them. Those are them. This is what fell. It was angle iron through the floor. Holy shit. Yeah, that's Dude, what That's that... a nice piece. I, there's I don't know. definitely another piece of angle iron up there. Yeah. <laughs> that's asbestos insulation. We don't want to fuck with it. Dude, that's why it made a giant thud. I was like, what the, that's, that's why we couldn't lift the, it. Daisy. I gotta pick her up. <laughs> oh yeah, so these here? I thought this was another dust collector. What is it? Two tanks filled with kerosene. Oh. Shut up. I'm gonna get a power washer and just power wash the shit out of the basement and then I'm gonna epoxy the floors. And woo! So you're leaving out all the good footage of us struggling. Well, it's hard to remember to like film stuff when you're doing it, but these skates are working out pretty nice. These are your uh, Alibaba skates or what? eBay. How much you pay for those? $230. Worth every penny. This is not the dumbest thing I've ever done. We got her up on uh, on Zadali's, and these were the cheapest ones on eBay kind of deal. Pretty nice size machine. I think it outrates the U-Haul trailer, but we've done dumber things. This side are getting bricked up. No windows, because there's a building right there. These windows will stay. Another day. Another day in paradise across from Hippos. Ooh, look at that. So I was trying to sell this thing. Some guy almost bought it. Then I was trying to give it away, just someone come get it. They'd have to disassemble it anyways to get it out, and no one wanted to do it. To all you people in the comments who are gonna be like, oh, you shouldn't uh, destroy that machine. First of all, I'm not really destroying it. Second, screw you, you could have came and got it. Here's the deal. This thing is worn to fuck out, which is okay, but for the type of stuff we do, if we had a giant milling machine that was like in really good shape, it would be usable. But a giant milling machine with 150 thousands of backlash at least on each screw, just ain't happening um, for French horns. So even for our tooling, it's too big. We're not scrapping it. It will not be staying in the building. Basically, we're taking, it took the table off. I'm gonna make the table into a welding table. The knee is gonna come off to get it out the door just to take some weight off. And we'll pull that out with the pal jack. And then this, base of the machine is going to sit in the parking lot and my sister is going to come spray paint it four times a year for different seasons just for shits and giggles because I don't really want to scrap it but I also have no use for it and I guess if I ever do we just pull it back inside. I can't wait for like the oh you should have given it to A-bomb comments like he does not want that machine. A-bomb likes nice machines but we have been priming. Ooh look how white it is and then that's obviously not primed so that's next. It's amazing the difference like before the ceiling made the old wall walls look bad because the ceiling was so much brighter but now the walls make the ceiling look bad. This degreaser called Challenger, my uncle told me to use it and it's really good. It's cheap too. I don't really care if the floors are like perfect. I don't really want them perfect actually because that's a lot of work but it'd be nice to have them all like wood colored again and not grease colored. If anyone still wants this thing you got like a week until I get it in the parking lot. Like this one dude I was telling him I was like, yeah, so if no one comes to get it, it's going in the parking lot. And he's like, oh, when will it be in the parking lot? And I'm like, dude, putting it in the parking lot does not mean it's up for grabs at that point. <laughs> I've already put in all the work I want to to get it out there. And there's really no risk of scrappers coming to get it. 
because this base weighs probably 4,000 pounds. But if, if our friends with the Tacomas come and uh, get this thing when it's sitting on the parking lot, good for them. They deserve it. Oh yeah, we got a piano. That's what happens when you talk to Andrew. He just gives you a bunch of crap. Okay, well a bit of progress is gone. You saw last time we got all this side of the building primed. What I did yesterday, yeah, don't come at me for my terrible painting skills. We sprayed this. The only thing we didn't spray is that wall over there next to the plywood window. Everything else we sprayed, and it made life a lot easier. Like I sprayed this entire half of the room in like 30 minutes maybe. Still have to figure out what we're doing with the windows. I had a mason come in, give us a quote to brick them up. He hasn't got back to me yet, but hopefully it's cheap because it'd be great to just get rid of these windows because they go to nowhere and they're all broken. Took the table off the Milwaukee. We got all this stuff painted. Front room's been painted for a while. We've just been kind of storing stuff. Having to shuffle stuff around a lot. So just about everything left in here is staying. So we'll have to get all organized, but pretty huge difference. So we're doing the ceiling next. I'm gonna fix these holes. I got a bunch of machines coming in here from Kansas. First week of August, August 7th or something. I'd like to to get this place pretty close to being ready paint wise and anything we had to do the floors by then so we'll be shuffling stuff some more so once we get machines like my machines in here I'm it's gonna be a lot of fun yeah just quick checking not much craziness going on here this is the spot in the floor where it's water damaged from that leak that we we're fixing and what I did yesterday is I took the circ saw and I just cut the spin you know, up whatever you want to whatever it's called the space between the boards to let it settle a bit and overnight it settled about like a three-eighths of an inch because it, it was pretty dry water hasn't been dripping on there for some time because it's been being caught so I was just curious if that would actually work and it seems like it is I'll leave it for now I just wanted to play with it in the office not much changed just been kind of doing what you got to do once we get the ceiling primed and I'm gonna be painting upstairs too while we got the primer out and the sprayer dirty hopefully we get this guy outside it'll make life a lot easier oh yeah I painted the workbench primed it I should say so for the walls I want to do them purple because I like purple but not like my aggressive machine purple I want it to be like really super light purple because I don't want the walls to be white because white will just show dirt but like that super light kind of basically off-white purple would actually hide the dirt pretty good and then I'm thinking we're good we'll do the trim and benches and all that stuff in some type of accent color I like chickens coming in this week the meter they ordered was taken forever so they're behind on that but otherwise it'll be fine hello it's me as you can tell, a lot has happened. <laughs> and I got a little busy there and forgot to pull out the camera, but we've had a lot of progress happen in the last week. It's been kind of crazy. It's currently like the 4th of August or something. And as you can see, the walls are all painted. Don't pay attention to that bottom over there. I have to cut it in. We got some of the purple started. So all the, all the white left basically is gonna be purple, all the trim. When I was scraping paint on these walls, it all looked like this corner over here, you'll remember. For all the disconnects on the wall, the disconnects are mounted to a piece of wood that are nailed into the concrete, okay? When I was scraping around that stuff, I noticed that there was a blue wall with a red stripe on it. It was so cool. And it ended up happening to where we went with the blue wall. And then John was here with me one night and we were talking about it like, yeah, we should totally do a stripe. And then we're like, why don't we just do a stripe? And it took, it was really quick actually. It took us about probably 40 minutes to do all the taping. And then we got some paint and then went for it. Didn't take that long. A couple of little bleeds and stuff. And then down there we had some of the blue paint uh, rip away because the wall's uneven there. But yeah, we're just like, oh, let's just do it. It'll be cool. Originally, the colors we were just gonna go with were the blue and the purple. A lot of people will make fun of me for the purple, but it's awesome. We went with uh, some Sherwin Williams. This paint is stupid expensive. At least in my, I'm not a painter. I don't know anything about paint. This is like the creme de la creme of industrial paint. And I think it, I mean, you can definitely tell it's it's high gloss, which is nice for cleaning, but it's, it's tough. I'm going over this plaster and drywall, all the different stuff in here. The purple is the same. We just have only done one coat of the purple so far. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Andrew and I built a bench over here. I actually bought a pallet of returned goods from a Lowe's. It had that compressor on it and these bathroom vanities at either end. The sinks were broken, so that was a bummer, but whatever, but I have these. Over here is where all the spinning lathes are gonna go. So in here is where I will keep spindle adapters and stuff like that. And the top will get a top, just like that. But this table is for bell mandrels. So this is the bell mandrel table. And I'll have trumpet mandrels on the, on the ground. I have another piece of plywood to put in so it's not on the ground, but trumpet mandrels will go there, and then French horn, all the bigger stuff will go up top. It just works out better than the other way around, because then the table would have to be like, four feet tall. You know, one of these tables will fit all my mandrels right now, but I'm getting a collection of mandrels from another person, hopefully soon. 
which would be awesome. And then I'll definitely fill up this table. Almost fill up this table. We had electricians in, so we've been waiting on electricians for a while, um, but they finally came, which not, not at their fault, it's just the materials are hard to get right now. They put in our panel, we're waiting on the face cover. This is 200 amps of three phase. And they did all the work outside, we're in the ground wire to the water main, which is like, 120 feet that way so they were poor guys who were there for like three hours doing that these panels can come off the wall now we're keeping all the cool stuff we're keeping like the switch and these boards my instinct is to like fill tubes in these i don't know I'm gonna get rid of these things these boxes we'll keep the boxes but um get this wall back so we could put some machines on this wall it's amazing that this one panel replaces Obviously it's a downgrade in service, so it's 400 amps compared to 200 amps, but that one panel replaces, you know, the switch and the big box that was in the corner. We got the table off the Milwaukee, so we're parting out the Milwaukee. Don't yell at me. I was literally giving it away for free and no one wanted it, so. If you need parts off it, let me know. Otherwise, they'll probably end up at Lost Creek or something. Fixing the leak upstairs, we rebuilt that wall. Still have to do the second coat of purple, but it looks great. Yeah, paint it up here. Still have to cut in the ceiling with the white. Should we just shove a bunch of stuff up here to get out of the way? But look at that, my spacious workshop. The, it's funny, before I painted the walls, I was making fun of these yellow machines, but after painting the walls, I'm like, damn, I might start painting machines yellow because it looks good with the colors on the wall. And it makes sense, because when they were painting the machines yellow, the walls were like this, so. They had some good taste back then. We have one more color to get, and it's for the exhaust fan up there for soldering. And I'm gonna paint it orange, just so we have all the primary and all the secondary colors, because I think that would be funny. People are gonna hate it, but it's my house. We're, we're flying. Drill presses got them in place. We have one more to bring over. It's there right now. It's gonna go on this side where the roundup things are. I'm exhausted. And tonight I'm going to Kansas City with John and Andrew, so stay tuned for that video. We're going to pick up my, the machines that I've had there for four years in storage. Cool stuff.